thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Round Table Talk Show. I'm your host, Sharifa Hardy, and we have a very special show for you today. Our guests are coming from all over the country, and we even have a guest who's calling in from Canada. So we're, we're going to find out what's going on in the world. Please share this um, live. Please support the show. Check out all our guests. Their links are in the description above. And I'm sure the information that you learn today is something that will not only change your business, but it might just change your life. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Peter, you're with Cordia Kitchens in Las Vegas. How are you? Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. And then we have Daniel Ramsey. And Daniel is the founder of C and CEO of My Outdesk. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Sharifa. And over here in the next corner, we have Callaway Cook. Callaway is the founder and president of Illuminate Labs. Good morning, Cal. Appreciate the invite, Sharifa. Oh, thank you for joining us. It's definitely my pleasure. And we have Corinne. Corinne is the president and CEO of Charisma Agency, which is a PR firm. And we're going to talk about PR in today's, let's say, just, what's today? Today's ideas today's market today where <laughs> exactly. we are today sharif i have a i have a whole thing where it's bc before corona Seriously. dc during corona <laughs> and ac after corona and so that's how we think of all this stuff you know the world is broken into three parts i i agree and i definitely want to talk about that i want to introduce you to my last guest which is mr mike Phillips. Mike has a podcast as well as being a digital executive, motivational speaker, and leadership coach. And I've had the honor of being on Mike's show, and I think at least twice. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having all of us. This is going to be awesome. I'm excited. Yes, it is. I'm excited as well. So I want to go back to Daniel. Daniel, you were talking about the AC, the BC. I, I messed it up. It's <laughs> BC, DC, and AC, correct? Yeah, we're, I mean, we look at the world very uh, differently in the, in the fact that a lot of entrepreneurs right now are just simply not making plans. They're not really moving forward. They're kind of just on the couch, drinking and watching Netflix and eating too much, right? And mm -hmm. our, our hope is that our audience, our people, everybody that's listening to your show, put together plans of action in those three different timeframes. And we, we've started as a company. Um, creating our 30 day plan in the DC moment and then our 100 day plan in the AC. Um, so this all came on really fast. Nobody could ever plan before, right? We, no, we were growing, everybody was happy, um, but we do have the opportunity to put some plans together. And that's why we created AC, DC, and BC, mm -hmm. which sounds so like a is, rock band. <laughs> yes, it, it does. So, what does myoutdesk.com do? So we're a virtual assistant company. We've served 5,000 people over the last 13 years, and we provide talent. I mean, before Corona, we help people double and grow providing assistance and leverage, which is every CEO needs that, right, in their business. It's the one thing that we all worry about, you know, think about, and really kind of focus on is how do I get more talent on my team or how do I get my talent to do better? And that's what we help entrepreneurs do right now. Mm, to do better in what areas? All areas, admin, marketing, sales. I mean, the major functions of every business out there is how do you attract clients? How do you get them through your doors and then service them? So we kind of, we're helping people with customer service. We're helping people with their IT stacks. We're helping people, you know, make sales, do marketing. And um, we're not a consultancy, meaning we don't provide like strategy. We just simply, we're a talent organization. We help people find the talent that they need to grow and scale. Have you found that since we're in this DC, we're, we're during the coronavirus, we're in this process, that yep. the businesses that you're working with are afraid of the marketing aspect? A lot of people, a lot of companies have just put everything on hold. They don't know what to do. So there's a certain fear of, I don't want to just waste money or I don't want to do the wrong thing. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, we're, we're cautioning our clients to do the actual opposite. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we tripled our spend in ads. Now, what people don't know is, is the value proposition in the DC and AC has to be different. Today, today, you have to do it safely and virtually. 
you know, and you have to have process and procedures. I think what scares most entrepreneurs is, you know, what's my liability? What's my risk? You know, how am I going to make sales in this world? So we've kind of, I don't know, pivoted or helped people figure out how to thrive in this world. And our primary focus is, you know, if you're a, I was just talking to an entrepreneur in, in Connecticut. She's a, she has a cleaning business, very successful, but she's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my pivot is. And I'm like, that's easy. You're now the Corona certified cleaning company, the only one in the entire state of Connecticut. And she's yeah. like, and her mind is blown. It's like, boom, you know? So uh, that's what we're helping our clients do is figure out, you know, what DC, what, what should I do? And then AC, what's my plan of attack a hundred days after this virus is, and we're, we're out of the shelter in place. Can I jump in on the, the marketing aspect, Sharika? Sharifa, is that okay? Uh, no, no, not, it's not okay. You ah. mispronounced my name, that no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't get the virtual coffee this morning. I've got real coffee over here. So, so, so one of the things as Daniel is, is talking about the marketing, so I do digital marketing uh, on a daily basis within the automotive industry. And so he, he, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of, you, you have two different sides. On one side, they're like, oh, you got to turn everything off and you have to stop. And the other side that they're like, you got to go full throttle forward. And for, for us, one of the things I think that is really important, whether it's an entrepreneurial, per, entrepreneurial business, I'm going to have a tough time pronouncing stuff <laughs> this morning, or a traditional business, Sharifa. Uh, only you though, Mike, uh, only you. Like I've been doing this show for three weeks. Everybody <laughs> comes on. They're perfectly normal. No problems. And, and then there's Mike. I, I've said more uh, <laughs> mispronunciations this morning than anyone else and probably on any of your shows. So um, I think what's really important is people need to look at what is important to them. What, it, you know, it, it, within the auto industry, I was speaking with somebody yesterday and he says, oh yeah, you got to cut all radio and TV. And I'm like, well, hold on a second, you still have people that are essential employees that are driving to their job at the medical facility that need transportation and you're still gonna get to them on the, on the radio. So do you need to make an adjustment and pivot? Yes, but do you go out and cut everything? Probably not, you need to look at on, on a per business basis. And the other thing as far as digital, I think because everybody shifted heavily to digital and I'm seeing that on the back end of everything because that's what I do in, in my daily life as digital marketing is there's a lot of people in the digital space that shouldn't be. You're, they're wasting their money if they're not taking the time to get somebody that knows what they're doing. And I'm not saying not everybody should be advertising digitally, but when you're, when you're doing marketing, it, it's one of those things you have to make sure that what you're saying in the digital space, what you're saying in traditional media, and uh, is that going to pair up with your processes either was it BC <laughs> or, or, and is it going to pair up to what, is it going to match up to what you're doing right now? Because if you're saying one thing in your marketing and you're not executing on that, when it comes to processes and reality, you're broke. You're good. It will fail. Yes, absolutely. Now, when it, um, we were talking about the market and one of the things that Mike just mentioned is the automobile industry. I want to talk to Peter because I think, Vegas is the only place that I've seen a meme specifically about, and it said Vegas without the strip is just Lancaster. So from a business owner's perspective, how are you operating during this um, quarantine? So Cordia started six months ago to be a ghost kitchen, virtual restaurant and delivery company, pure luck. We own a restaurant right on the Las Vegas strip literally right behind me in the picture that you're seeing. Uh, the Las Vegas Strip is completely shut down. We mm -hmm. have a different way of thinking about it here. It is BV and AV, B, <laughs> before vaccine and after vaccine. Mm -hmm. Because 40 million mm -hmm. tourists are not going to get on a plane anymore and mm -hmm. fly here and go to a convention and shake hands and pat each other on the back and taste samples from the food show. And the restaurant business is finished. The restaurant business, as we know it, is pretty much over. You know, today, Bill de Blasio in my old hometown of Manhattan said, nobody can go to Yankee Stadium until August, right? So in Taiwan, they're playing baseball in empty stadiums. In Hong Kong, they have every third or fourth table you can sit at in restaurants. So everything is going to be delivered now. 
everything is going to be catered. The company lunch, when you go back to that, when you go back, is not going to be go out to a restaurant. It's going to be we'll get the rest, we'll get the lunch catered. The clients will come to the office and they small, less than 20, less than 10, maybe just five around the conference room now. So I think that we're seeing, and Las Vegas is, is going to be changed until there is a vaccine uh, and people feel safe and gathering again. Every casino is a Petri dish. Mm -hmm. People from all over the world going in, touching the machines, the dice, sleeping in the same rooms, drinking at it. It, it, it can't happen anymore until people feel like, okay, I can be vaccinated against this. And that's all tourism. But Vegas especially, because no one lives here. There is no industry here. It depends on people coming from the rest of the world, then coming in. And the only thing Vegas makes is memories. Oh. What, what I was curious about is I wonder if all of tourism and all of travel have that same belief and are functioning in that same timeline. Because I think probably the same situation for airlines, same situation for Disneyland, for cruises. Like I'm thinking, you know, after coronavirus and we can get out of our homes, our, most businesses will move forward. But I'm not in the airline or cruise or Disney or, you know, tourism world. So I'm curious your perspective there. Would you crowd into a room with 18,000 people at a UFC? Would you crowd around a roulette wheel at the MGM Grand? Now, people will come back. You know, you're seeing it in Macau. People are coming back. But the cost structure and the way these casinos and restaurants and shows are financed, you need half the house full. Yeah. You can't operate the win with 10% occupancy. Sure. You have to have at least half of that place full. You're going to David Copperfield only if he can make the virus disappear. So, so what you're going to see is, do you need all of those people? Uh, so I have, you know, 25 employees. I'll bring back eight. Even if I got stimulus money, I don't need all of the waitresses, all of the bartenders, the runners. The do you will you valet your car? If, yeah. Will you drive up to a casino and valet your car knowing three or four or five people might get your car? Somebody parks it, somebody moves it, somebody brings it to you, somebody hands you the ticket. Mm -hmm. It's funny because as you're talking, I'm thinking maybe the, the pivot for your value proposition in Vegas is like the cleanest hotel or the cleanest restaurant in the world you know, <laughs> instead of the littlest or the biggest, you know? Yeah, from a business standpoint, um, our takeout business is great. From a business standpoint, uh, the labor cost just went down 50%, maybe 70% since chefs are being laid off, yeah. food prep people are being laid off. The vendors are throwing the food at us. Pay us when you can, because they're set yeah. up to service every hotel in Las Vegas. Now, real estate just got went to free. You don't have to spend money for real estate anymore. Landlords will say, take it and pay the utilities because no one's coming here. And I have a location in Los Angeles, very similar. Uh, Los Angeles will come back a lot quicker. Uh, Los Angeles will come back, but they'll still be distancing. There'll still be the emphasis on delivery and there'll still be the pre-vaccine fear. So from a, a restaurant standpoint, um, and entrepreneurs who lost their restaurant can still cook. So they can rent space, open up a restaurant on Uber Eats, and they'll still have an income and still have a business. Wow. Excellent point. Callaway. Please tell us about Illuminate Labs. Tell us what you do there. Yeah, so uh, I founded Illuminate Labs uh, as a supplement company, basically because of the issues that I was having as a supplement consumer. Um, so I don't know if you guys are aware, if you personally take supplements, but the U.S. supplement market is, for all intents and purposes, totally unregulated. So if you go to GNC, if you go to uh, the vitamin shop, you know, you have no idea what's in that bottle. Often it's contaminated with heavy metals and it's, you know, inaccurately labeled. There's a lot of third-party studies showing this. And so what we do, we have a process where we manufacture supplements. We send it out to a third-party laboratory for testing. So there's like no economic bias at all. And then we publish the test results right on the product pages. So totally solves like the safety and the uh, accountability issues in the U.S. supplement market. So, um, you know, since we're in e-commerce, uh, luckily the coronavirus doesn't really affect us at all. In fact, we've seen a slight uptick in sales. Um, you know, very early stage company, we just launched... Uh, Technically, we were in beta for a couple of months. We officially launched in the middle of March. We had a press release. So it was a, it was a strange time to have an official launch. 
Um, it probably didn't get as much pickup as uh, as it would have the press release specifically, but um, you know, had a few VCs actually reach out since then, and it's been uh, you know, I, I just feel fortunate that you know the market I'm in, we have low overhead. Um, you know, I know a lot of small businesses are hurting, so just trying to be uh, thankful. Mm, interesting. Now, when you did your your launch in March, where I'm pretty sure there are either people who are advisors or some type of board. W was everybody on board with launching the business now? Or were there some people who had concerns and said, you know what, this is not the time to move forward? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so not not really an official board. I mean, I, I raised a small angel investment round. So those are like technically my advisors, but we don't, it's, it's a pretty informal thing. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, since our overhead is is like static, we were already paying for fulfillment and warehousing. That's really the, the bulk of the overhead. I mean, we have software costs, but but that's it. It's less than a thousand dollars a month, which is amazing. Um, you know, it wouldn't have made sense to delay it because we were still paying those costs. So even if we could just bump our sales up a little bit, uh, it's, it's worth it just to go forward. So that's what we're doing. Now, from your initial launch in March to where we are now in April, did you change your marketing or your marketing message in any form? That's one of the things that I've been seeing is a commonality between the business owners and entrepreneurs, where some people started with a very aggressive buy now, get this, you have to have this. And now they're at, this is here to help you. Did you change your message in any way? Not, not really, because basically what we're doing, we mostly focus on content marketing and, and SEO anyway, right? So, so our, we're not doing a lot of aggressive paid ads, like price focused, right? We are testing uh, different PPC channels. So Reddit ads, uh, Google Merchant Center, uh, we're going to do Facebook, we set up the pixel, do remarketing and all that. But, we, you know, we want to be well over 50% uh, organic sales, getting people driving traffic organically through SEO and through content marketing. And so, um, you know, I don't see us like expanding our PPC a lot because like you said, we don't want to come off as tone deaf and be super aggressive. But what we really want to do like during this period is just test all the different paid channels, determine what's the most profitable. And then once all this is over, kind of, you know, funnel a lot of money uh, into that channel. Hmm, interesting. So, Corinne, I saved you for last for a specific reason. Uh, woman power. No, I'm just kidding. That wasn't the reason. <laughs> you are, you have your own PR firm. And so everyone else pretty much to a certain extent either has an independent business where they focus on their particular service or product or like Daniel, he has his business, but he also helps other um, business owners. But you have a PR firm. What type of advice and strategy are you offering your clients at this time? Well, you need to be strategic in the sense that you need to use the before like your daniel saying to keep your word keep your actual value of your company because if you go into uh, the digital world and you just switch your mindset suddenly well the customer you had before won't really understand what you're trying to do so you have to keep your word and be really strategic with messaging and that also come up as how can I say that as using the opportunity to get coverage, to get your business out there, it needs to be like really careful in the wording of what you're doing, unless you're offering a service, it could be something you're helping your community. You know, like if you have a restaurant per se, you're delivering meals to the kids because the kids at school normally has this like this breakfast in like the poor community or something like that. But I think that you need to always keep being on brand and being authentic to your true value. Makes perfect sense. Daniel, what are your thoughts on messaging at this time? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I think each business has to not only consider what their core competencies are as a business. Like, mm -hmm. um, I love what you were saying, Corinne. Um, one of the things that we're helping our clients do right now is determine what their actual core competencies are next week we're having a round table with i think like 30 um clients and their employees and the the thing that we're doing is we're breaking them off into different zoom rooms like in putting them in these rooms and then saying hey what are your core competencies what are the things that you guys do at really a high level you know and then second question is how can we retool for this new world like what 
based on your core competencies, based on who your clients are and who your audience is, who, how can you effectively sell in this environment? One, one of our tenants is we call sales for an entrepreneur or a business or anybody, the air that we breathe, right? Try to hold your breath for 10 minutes, you know, and a lot of businesses are like, well, I'm just going to wait until this is all over. So in our world, um, we're just helping people understand what they can do, how they can possibly retool their business and then get out there and create opportunities to serve their clients and add value. I, one of my favorite lines is we're all in the business of exchanging value for cash mm -hmm. and we still have to do that in the next 30 to 90 days. So um, that, that's primarily what we're focused on right now. And I think something else that's like the best time to do is to clean up your social media, your website. So when you come back, the after, um, that's, you're going to be like all ready to bounce back. I know it's hard to say because the money flow is not as, you know, it's not there as it was before, but go online, like fix your website, go digital, try to find ideas that is even going to help your business after to get more money out of it too. Because you can't, we can't be stuck in the whole idea that, damn it, there's a crisis. You need to think after the crisis and think again creatively on how to move forward instead of thinking backwards. Well, I think on, on that, one of the things that people often don't realize right now is it, there's so much going on digitally. You know, Sharifa, you've got this show. I've, I've got my show. Everybody is retooling and, and doing website stuff and some stuff behind the scenes, but there's a lot of traffic on social media mm -hmm. channels. Some good, some bad, some relevant, some irrelevant, lots of opinions, way more opinions than facts. And one of, one of the things that uh, for, for me, whether it's my, my leadership education, my consulting that I'm doing, or even on the, the digital marketing side within the automotive dealership, one of the things that people are searching for right now, now this is opinion, but I think people, and, and they've always been looking for this, are looking more now to connect with other humans. They're looking for the humanity behind the business. People have never done business with businesses. They do business with the people in the business. And it, you know, one of the things that's so important for, for entrepreneurs, uh, you know, Daniel, you said it a minute ago, like, hey, what are our core competencies? What's the, what's the value that I can offer to, to, to this person? And oftentimes we get that behind a veil of, well, I'm my business or, or my business is me, you know, and people are trying to connect with that business. They're not trying to connect with the business, whether you're a traditional retail, whether you're an entrepreneur, whatever it is, they're connecting with the, the humanity that, that is in the business. So for, for us, like in, in the automotive dealership world on that side, everybody suddenly has gone to, we can do everything all digital and we can do this. Well, let me give you a tip. There's other people that are dependent or you may de be dependent on other people like state DMVs. A lot of those, those organizations are not prepared to operate digitally. So it doesn't matter how good your message is or how good your processes are if there's, if there's something else. So that's one of the things when anybody is exploring core competencies, when they're exploring how can I pivot, what can I do better right now? What are the other businesses that you're dependent on also? And are they ready to support you in this new environment? You know, as much as, yeah, we want it to be just about us, but there's, there's other, there's other moving, there are, or can be other moving parts, you know? So it, it, as a business, one of the things that I've really has been at my core right now and, and Sharifa, you and I have been connected on social for a long time. There's, t I go through these periods where I'm, everything's like, totally virtual and social media and it's out there. And then I go through periods where there's nothing and people are reaching out like, is everything okay? Are you, <laughs> I know that well. <laughs> are you all right? And it's like, yeah, I'm working in the real world, man. Uh, one of the, the things that has kept me to my core is just this one question that it's saying, what am I doing to grow myself or someone else today? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what kind of business that you're in. If I'm working on something to grow myself, it may not be visual to everybody else. If I'm working on to, to grow someone else. It may not be visual to, to somebody else, but if you're doing something to move forward, especially in an entrepreneurial space, 
Like right now, you could go take a free Google Analytics course. You can take free advertising courses. You can do all these things that may not be, and I absolutely agree with Corinne that like, hey, you look at your website, look at your social media. What, what's the outward facing stuff that you have for the world? But what are the inward things that you're working on to get better too? You know, it, it's important right now that rather than trying to put everything out there and constantly market, you have to be really good when we get back from this thing. And just like the sages have always said, this too shall pass. And when it does, how are you prepared? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to say real quick too. I yeah, I totally agree with that. I feel like if you're an entrepreneur, um, you know, everyone has more free time now, right? So even outside of the time you spend in your business, um, you know, it's like we're not socializing as much. You can't go to the bar on the weekend. Uh, I used to go to the casino. I like playing uh, Texas Hold'em. None of that oh, anymore. Like that. <laughs> so you know, it's just it's a great time to like take free courses. I'm taking web development courses um, and just getting certifications free online there's so many free online resources whether it's for seo for web development for social media marketing it's like you might as well just just get some certs and just like spend this time productively basically instead of just watching netflix or whatever well and and at the same time there's stuff i mean like everybody's i i promise you everyone here on this panel has got their phones within reach of the of of <laughs> them right so you know for a different perspective rather than we try and cast this wide net in business well i got to get on social media and i gotta how many people can i contact today how about just as a thought just go through your phone and call five people a day one-on-one -on -one human connections and ask how they're doing find out what they need from you find out what you can do for them that there is so much power in real human connection to reach out to somebody right now and guess what they're going to answer because they're at home. <laughs> they're, they're hanging, unless they're on a webinar like this, people are available. And so that's one of the things. Call people, connect with them, remind them what you do. And I know that may be a little bit of an old school philosophy. You know, my background, I did one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching for youth, youth athletes. So I'm used to being right here with somebody and then moved into automotive sales. And automotive sales, you know, I did that for on the front line for 10, 12 years. And so when you're in automotive sales, you gotta be right here with someone, maybe not so much anywhere anymore, but that that's the thing is it's like, okay, well, there's still a lot of value just behind, pick up the phone and call somebody that you haven't talked to in a while or that you haven't heard from, or that's not on social media, but inclusive of your family. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, get, we get wrapped up in how to grow the business and how to do uh, you know, what can I do to, to uh, exchange my value for, for cash? Like, uh, like Daniel said earlier, I got, I got to come up with the value, man. I got to have the value proposition. And it's like, I know it may be cheesy, but one of the things that helps keep me grounded is uh, slow down and have a real face-to-face -face conversation with the 13 year old. Call the kid that, that is now living on his own that had to come back from college right? And is living back in his parents' basement. That kid needs to hear from somebody and needs a coach right now. Cause he's like, dude, I had freedom for six months or she, and now they're like, well, I'm back to the Xbox. And you're like, okay, here's what you can be doing to grow right now. I, I love it. I want to go over to Peter for a minute. One of the things that I love is that you really took a positive view on this change. I mean, I can almost see the glow from here. Your face is, is glowing. Like you literally see this as an opportunity. And I believe you mentioned that word, you know, and there are so many people who are kind of even afraid to say uh, this is an opportunity because of everything that's going on in the world. Was this process easy for you? Did you, were there, were there times when you're like, wait a minute, everything is about to change or you just did you just hop in there and say this is what we have to do well so what this situation did was accelerate a trend that was already occurring in the business that i picked right and mm -hmm. i've done 20 different deals I, I i've worked in in finance and in in taking companies public forever and i sort of semi-retired uh mm -hmm. and then fell into the restaurant business in in las vegas and so there's a lot of good suggestions that I've heard about what to do about yourself now. But the other side of that coin, which is going to sound terrible, is a lot of your competitors are going out of business. Mm -hmm. A lot of your competitors aren't going to get up off the canvas that Corona put them on. So that's the opportunity now. Who is going out of business? Can I hire them? Can I take their customer? Can I get office space cheaper? I mean, mm -hmm. everything on the planet is on sale. Everything you've ever wanted is on sale. And, and there are so many people who don't have the strength 
or the mental toughness or the mm-hmm. desire to go forward. How many people 60 plus are going to walk away from their businesses or sell them on good terms? How many mm-hmm. people who have said, I- I've had it. I can't take this anymore. I have a little bit of money. There's something left in my 401k. I'm done. So anybody under 60 who wants to be successful, whatever your industry is, everything you've ever wanted, you can get half price probably today and probably on terms. So we're looking at other restaurants. We're going to add gaming to our main location in Las Vegas because nobody's going to want to go to the casino. They'll still Mm -hmm. be degenerate gamblers who want to come in uh, (laughs) and we'll socially distance the video poker machines, but there will still be that business. I also am half a mile from the new Raider Stadium. Pure luck. I wish I could say I, I planned that. I didn't. There will be people who will get, we're doing pickups. Um, we'll do takeout. For the, you're going to watch the Raiders game at home, so we'll do that. I have a celebrity background. I'm working on celebrity virtual dinner parties. So you can buy a takeout from our restaurant, and the celebrity of your choice will Zoom in or Skype in for 15 minutes, and we'll give part of that money to charity or a local food bank or first responders or, or whatever. So the thing is, what happened yesterday doesn't exist anymore. The world you live in doesn't exist anymore. But if you want to be smart about it, uh, everything's for sale. And all you have to do is just go get it. Hmm. So it's all about it. like being willing to go get it. It's the go-getter that's going to get through this whole madness right now. Because if you, have, if you see things, you need to, again, like just go and get it. It's out there. You're like the world is at your feet literally like we're all like on our computer 24 7 on our phone you want something in to do partnership partnership is something good too for your business like you're looking at doing partnership with people well in my case because i'm in canada but um in the states in italy in france they're gonna get back on their feet a little bit faster than us on the north american side so it's all about like opportunities and see like look at them like you, like pretty much you were saying. Yeah, take some action Peter's, right now. <laughs> and to Peter's point too, I was just gonna say I think I, I saw a stat that um, you know most of the unicorn companies from the last decade they launched during the great the recession of of oh eight oh nine. And so notably Uber, Airbnb, um, mm-hmm. we work we work's not going so well right now. There and there was tens of others. But yeah, I mean even if you're not acquiring, if you just can continue to build profitability, then you know you're just gonna have less competitors at the end of this so a friend of mine said um he we were talking about uh, models and how to get through this and what to do and he's like chop everything make your model extremely profitable right now and then collect all of that value when this thing is over because right now it's about getting lean making sure your business still generates cash and then in five years, the amount of cash that it'll generate is astronomical because most of your competitors won't be around. Well, and the, on the other side of that, I, w- I was going to say, you know, when, when Peter's talking about, hey, that, you, you know, it does take some fortitude to look at it and say, hey, these guys are going out, but you, you can be a hero too. That for people that are wanting to uh, grow their businesses, there are people that have an entrepreneurial spirit or ones that are really good top notch employees that are going to be looking after this. And if you want to accelerate your individual business, you have an opportunity for two things. One, grow your business and yourself. And two, you, you'll, you'll be able to help bail someone else out if you go after it because they're like, Hey, I'm looking to, you, you know, there are people, you, you said the under 60 demographic that are like, Hey, I'm going to have to have a job when all this is over. Okay. Well, the, what better way to stimulate, their personal economy than hire them, right? So it's, you know, I, I think there's, that's very, very valuable input. Where are you located, Mike? I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And we're, we're heavy tourism also. When he was talking about tourism earlier, um, I, one of the unique things is uh, from our perspective, like we're, we're looking at this as an opportunity to grow. We've gone as much digital as we can uh, inside the automotive space. But looking at tourism, one of the things we're like, hey, we're going to see a lot more, in my opinion, we're going to see a lot more domestic travel. So people are going to buy cars and they're going to, because they don't want to go on planes, they don't want to hand off their, their, uh, they don't want to 
maybe sit in an Uber that, that 15 other people have been through prior to them and so forth. So it's like, hey, what are they gonna do? It's the old school family vacation, uh, domestic travel and so forth. So we're, we're, we're in a, a heavy tourist area as well. Um, I'll echo what, what Peter was saying earlier is it's like, yeah, I, I do think it's going to have an immediate effect. Ultimately, everything's going to, you know, everybody's going to come through it. There, there's just going to be different channels. There's going to be different venues that people uh, operate in to, to still do some things that they want to take vacations to, to do that kind of stuff. It was just interesting. I was just noticing a different energy, the different vibe, you know, because we have Mike here in Colorado Springs. He's like, yeah, it'll be okay. They'll come back and we'll get to the tourism. And then you have Peter over here. He's like, buy now. Your, comp your competition is losing. Get everything now. I'm like, okay. All right. My, hey, I, you know, I, I don't disagree with him. <laughs> Keep in mind, my background is sales. I, I do not disagree with him in the it's slightest. It's the Vegas energy, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's to get all the it's money you can. It's energy, really. It's I can York. tell. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm a 40-year New Yorker before I found, fell into Las Vegas. So it's like, you know, I just see a see opportunity where, I and, and not so much in a vulture way, but mm -hmm. there will be a way to create if you have a if you have a a business that you you we can take out your overhead for you your mm -hmm. overheads just I mean there are there are just different things that you're going to be able to do now that mm -hmm. didn't exist and then you'll be able to slowly build either build back or go in a completely different direction uh, using the skills that you have uh, uh, have now uh, uh, that were changed by the current environment. So, you know, to, I'm sorry, I was going to no, say to, to one of the earlier points too. So I'm on the board of directors for our local Better Business Bureau. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're connected with like the Small Business Development Center, which is heavy in entrepreneurs, uh, heavy in small business startups. And the director there, um, her and I were talking probably 90 days ago, right before all this hit mainstream. And her comment, she says, look, most people that are entrepreneurs and starting businesses, you'll see a big influx when there's uh, recessions or perceived recessions of people starting their own stuff. Because then one, they, they want to be only dependent on themselves. And secondly, everybody's got some fire and some passion burning in them that, hey, I, I want to ignite this and I want to go, but is often working for someone else. I think they even say, you know, whatever, four out of five millionaires that are, are working their, their side hustle are actually working for someone else in, in the meantime. And uh, she had said, yeah, but that, so that's the thing is if people are laid off, they've lost their job, they go, well, I got nothing to lose now. So let, you know, to Peter's point, let's go, right? I, I have an opportunity, whether I'm acquiring this, I'm finding this, I'm starting my own uh, uh, deal, I'm igniting my own passion. Like there, there's a lot of people that are going to, to do that. At the same time, there's going to be a lot of people that try to do that and don't succeed. And they still need to, to end up working for someone or with someone. And so, you know, it's going to provide opportunity for those business owners and executives as well to acquire some really good people. Yes, but it also provides opportunity for people such as yourself because you have leadership programs that can assist these entrepreneurs and Absolutely. lead the team in your podcast. I know Daniel's been helping very hands-on with his clients and potential clients who are just going through this whole area for the first time. So I know we talked about this pre-show and honestly, I, I forget who actually said it, but we were briefly discussing the loans, the, the SBA loans. Who was mm -hmm. I think I think that was me. I, think that was I was me. like, I know I didn't dream that. <laughs> Yeah, we were uh, so three three weeks ago. We did a webinar series for an internal clients, and so far we've had about nine hundred people come through those webinars and all various ranges. We had a sixty million dollar company and somebody who's a brand new startup like Callaway, and we're just kind of navigating it. And the Fed keeps changing, the Treasury keeps changing. Oh yeah, I, I mean it's it's a it's a little mind blowing. And this morning they just launched, or I just saw that the treasury announced another $2.3 trillion in, you know, loan programs for small and medium sized businesses. And so, you know, and yesterday I heard that 
you know, the EIDL loan just got whacked from $2 million to $1,000 per employee. And oh, wow. who knows if you're going to get your PPP money because apparently half of the money has already been distributed, you know? So okay. we're living in very weird, uncertain um, times. And, you know, our advice to um, our businesses is apply for everything and let the world sort it out. You know, well, I like that. I like and, that. And, and even we're even helping people like apply for this, do all that work that Callaway was talking about, you know, internal work and, you know, get a certification and, and get on unemployment. If, if really your business has stopped, get these loans and then figure out what, you know, after coronavirus looks like for your business. I, I think, um, yeah, I think that's all you can do. Callaway, what were your thoughts? Yeah, no, I mean, I, like I said, I applied, um, I was like three days late because I wanted to read through everything. I should have taken the approach. Now everyone is telling me that what Daniel said, uh, you know, just apply first because you don't have to take the loan, right? So <laughs> I should have just applied as soon as it came out. So I don't expect to see it. But I think the thing that's crazy is that the way that it's set up, it doesn't really, um, it, it's not necessarily going towards businesses that were harmed by the coronavirus, right? So for example, like I applied, we weren't technically harmed by the coronavirus, but I applied because it's available for, for all small business owners and I'm a small business and you know, I, you got to do what you got to do. But like, for example, if you're an LLC and you have three members and you each member, let's say you have a software development firm, right? And each member took home 500 grand last year. You're in the perfect situation for this because you have very low overhead. So you're just going to get a free grant to pay yourself a couple hundred thousand dollars from the government, which is obviously not necessarily what this is, is intended to do, but that's who's getting a lot of the money right now. Um, you know, for me, even for example, like I didn't pay myself at all uh, towards the end of last year just because I wanted to be prudent. But if I had the loan I would have gotten to pay myself now would have been much higher, right? <laughs> so it doesn't really make right. sense because I'm being punished for being prudent. If I would have gotten you know, uh, close to a hundred grand loan from a PPP just to pay myself because my business is, is just me as opposed to something that's probably going to be, you know, even I, if I get it. a couple. Of there's grand. another issue too. I mean, you know, we're a pretty large company and we're going to get a, a sizable amount in the PPP, but as an entrepreneur, you know, we're coaching our clients to like, okay, do you need all these people in this world? And even though it's free money, you know, the loan amount is really low. And so there's this balance that a lot of entrepreneurs are, are taking, you know, we've got our CPA involved, we've got our controller involved, because we need to model what the business looks like after this and what we think our sales are going to be and what we think mm -hmm. our overhead and what we're going to get maybe from the government. And then look at our tax position and our cash position. It's a really complicated thing. So I think most entrepreneurs won't have the resources to actually either apply or get the money and do the right thing with the money. So it's a really complicated program. I like Canada's approach. Give everybody two grand. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you I'm on that. I'm about for my own country right now. I'm not going to lie. And it's funny no because the prime minister is on TV at the moment talking about like Trump and everything. Um, but all of this to say, yeah, it's true. Like Canada is more lean in and looking at grants and everything, it's easier to apply. However, it's more centered to businesses that really needs it uh, versus that businesses that don't because we went in isolation mode so quick, especially mm -hmm. in Quebec and Montreal. Um, so right now they're just looking at helping as quickly as possible. So even when we apply, um, well, for the 2000, for example, you'll get it, it says in three to five days, but not even 48 hours after you're getting it. Wow. My point here is like how they were able to do something. Granted, we're not as big as the US and that's for sure. However, the system that they developed was good enough and doesn't really make mistakes right now. So yeah, I think that we like on the loans and all that, we're on a better shape, of course, uh, at the moment than the U.S., that's for sure. So Sharifa, Daniels, what are you I doing, Sharifa? You've got a New Yorker and a Canadian on your show. I, I don't know if I like this. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, no, Mike. no. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, to your point, uh, a few minutes ago, when you're saying, you know, when as businesses are applying for these loans, as business, you know, all the the stuff that go, and, and I'm I'm with you. Like if it's available, apply for it and figure it out later. 
Yeah, you know that's, <laughs> and I don't think that was your specific verbiage, but it, you're you're absolutely right. Like, hey, if it's there, apply for it and figure it out later. And the reality is, once you've applied for it, there's a lot of maybes. You know, I, th I when you were talking about that, you were like, well, maybe you get it. Maybe it, I, I think the problem is there's a lot of maybes in the government right now. Like, well, maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do that. And, and not only do we have that at a federal level, in my opinion, we've got it at a state level also. Like Colorado as a state could not make up their mind if we were going to be allowed to sell cars for not. And that's just one industry. They yeah. couldn't make up their mind. Could we do it in person? No. Yes. No. Maybe. Oh, the governor said you can. Now the governor said you can't. Now the governor said you could do it virtually. Oh, the DMV can't support that. Like make a decision. One of our struggles right now is not only do <laughs> mm -hmm. we have a disaster in, I shouldn't say disaster, but it is a disaster at a, at a federal level, politically, everybody's got all these party lines and BS and, and stuff going on at that level. And then you have 50 states that are, that are all, you, you know, and then regionally and, and all this, like everybody seems to have an agenda at, at you, you know, when it comes to the politics of all of it. And in the meantime, you've got people that are on the ground, like the, the people that you have on your show, the one that I watched from a, a couple weeks ago. And then today, the, the, these are the people that are impacted, not all the people in Washington that are trying to figure the stuff out. I'll tell you, if they wanted to solve stuff a lot faster, get, you know, 50 different entrepreneurs in the room together and then have a resolution on it in the, within the next few days. Get, yeah. get 50 different, you know, car guys or business owners or or supplement salespeople or you know get people that have boots on the ground to actually connect and, and i know that's not realistic i'm living in a i'm living in a fantasy world right now but for goodness sake that's that's part of they're part of the problem in my opinion but i i was just about to say on a Kenyan side of things i think that one thing why people are so much more together it's exactly what you just said on the opposite side, because here, province and federals kind of listen to each other and work together and municipal too. So when it comes to take quick decision at this moment right now, that's why it goes quicker. Yeah. And well, you guys have you guys have a high trust um, society, though. You Correct. trust your government trusts. Yeah. We're in a low the U.S. is we're in a low trust environment. Oh. We don't trust, trust our me. politicians. Businesses don't trust each other. Like, and so the, the, it's a lot easier in crisis to be mm -hmm. in a high trust. You can trust. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about sure. what, what's happening in Europe. The reason they're going to come back faster is because their government and their citizens all trust each other to act correctly. Yesterday, I was at the park with my kids because this is what we do in Corona times, right? Uh, we're at the park after dinner and a lady comes and lets her dog off the leash in the park and the dog is running around like barking at people and messing with people. And I think this lady needs to go to jail, you know, because she just is irresponsible, you know, and you um, want to grab her and be like, Oh, oh I'm not six feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for exactly. here, it got to the point last week. I mean, which is not a bad thing, but people are snitching on people too. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's a good thing in the sense that there's like people getting like, tickets if there are more than th two people that they know each other um all of this is to say that social isolation is that uh, that's the sensing i can't even speak english today sorry but um, <laughs> I'm French. that's a french it's all good um but it's all to say that people are taking things super seriously here and yep. quebec as a province have mm -hmm. been the fastest well, i mean in north america and in understanding social distancing. I seriously can't say that word. Um, but no, yeah, they okay. have been the, yeah, they've been the fastest because even Google said that we listen more and like, it's it's been better. But trust me, like, I feel for New York and for you guys because watching the press conference, I'm like, this is crazy. That's like a reality show. It's drama TV. On, Dude, on steroids. Insane. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we wanted a reality TV star to, to run the country. So <laughs> we this is what we get. I want to go back to a little bit about what Cal was saying. And this was not specifically to you as a business owner. But what I've seen is the yeses have been a lot more um, lenient than in the past. So maybe a business did not 
was not necessarily affected by COVID-19, but they still received the loan. But the way I look at it is that directly or indirectly, every business has been affected by COVID-19. Maybe they had a small overhead, they didn't have a lot of employees, but what about their potential customers or their potential clients? Maybe these are people who would have purchased your supplements had they not been laid off, had they not lost their company. So those are sales that you would have had. And so what the government is trying to do as business owners is allow you the liquidity to stay in business while everyone else figures it out. Positively. Mm-hmm. Well, and I a think really good point there, it was interesting because like three or four weeks ago, when all this went down, I reached out to our insurance broker and mm-hmm. I was like, how are things going for you? And he's like, oh, no effect. We're fine. Everybody's good. I talked to him yesterday. He's like, oh my gosh, the, the world is on fire. So I think <laughs> we're all, depending on your industry, if you're in tourism or, you know, in my, in, in our case, we support other businesses. So I think our speed of what, when we're going to be affected it just varies per industry and, and, and sure. per location. I think on a PR side of things, uh, right now it's calmer for mm-hmm. some, again, it goes back to what Danielle was saying, because it depends on the industry you're in. So of course, someone that's doing travel is going to be affected and it's going to be slower. However, the after is going to be a giant boom on the PR side because the brands that are affected right now will need the branding they will need like to get their word out that hey i'm back i'm here i exist well let me give you another example myself in my business i'm a talk show host i launched my first um, blog talk radio show in 2009 since then i've had a show in some form or fashion so someone would look at my company you know just being a talk show and saying it's been affected by covid19 but i will tell you prior to this and, and when i came up with the idea for the show there were clients or business people that i could have called and said hey daniel i'm starting this i need you as a sponsor hey peter you have that great restaurant i need you to sponsor the show and those people unequivocally would have said yes now it, it, it just shut me down as far as the opportunities people are willing to take risk on because they're in a, a space of, okay, wait a minute, let me just do what I have to do. Let me focus on maintaining my business as opposed to looking at other ventures. Right. I mean, uh, people have asked me what we're doing and I say, spend nothing, right? There's yeah. no reason to spend anything. Cheesecake Factory and Tesla are renegotiating leases, multi-billion mm-hmm. dollar market caps. Spend absolutely nothing because unfortunately your ad rate just got cheaper. Your mm-hmm. everything just got cheaper. So if regardless of whether you get PPP or any of those loans, if what you have now is enough, is has increased what you can buy as time goes on because mm-hmm. people are more going to get more desperate. So they will lower the prices. Look. Food suppliers are giving away food because they don't want it to go bad because they don't have schools anymore to sell it through. They don't have hotels to sell it through. Takeout is not going to going to uh, uh, be enough. So the entire supplier in any business, it's basically everything's on sale. So you need to preserve your capital and make the strategic purpose that you have to get instead of a spending $1 to get 10, you can now spend $1 to get 50 if you do it correctly. And And as you're talking, one of the things, if people are not renegotiating their contracts right now, you mm -hmm. should, uh, on the flip side, you should be reaching out to your vendors. One of the things that we did within the last, uh, you you know, and our, our company ended up going, getting furloughed for 10 days while our governor tried to figure everything out or the, the retail company on the digital marketing side that I work in. Um, So I've been doing a lot more of this behind the scenes, but one of the things that we did right away, once we had decided that that was the direction that we were going, we reached out to literally every vendor and asked to renegotiate the contract. And we started like, you know, where, where Peter's saying, and and depending on the company, you know, we don't want to be uh, impacting, especially small business, we're a small business, we don't want to impact them the wrong way. But if from small business to large retail contracts, if, you know, they want to keep you in the contract because they want to have the relationship when you get through this. So like our traditional media, our TV and and radio spend, because we do still spend some, it's around 10 to 20% of what it was pre-COVID-19. And that'll, for the same products, 
that allowed us to stay on the air, communicate with people, as I was saying earlier, like the central employees that need transportation uh, got us a significantly reduced cost. And part of that, you know, and some of them are like, we'll waive this month's advertising. We'll do it at 20% next month, depending on what happens. So I think communication is really, really a big tool at this time and nurture those vendor relationships also, because as you're nurturing those relationships, you know, and, and you're talking with them and you know what they're willing to do for you, what you're willing to do for them is stay on through the contract through X amount of time. So, so I think there's, there are a lot of ways to be mutually beneficial and people will remember there, there's a, another educator that I'm connected to on Facebook. Uh, he does uh, Facebook advertising. Am I allowed to name names, Sharifa? Yes, you are. Uh, okay. So uh, a, a friend of mine I've been connected to for a long time, Dennis Yu, on, uh, he does you know Facebook and digital marketing and so forth. And when this first hit, he released and said, I'm going to do all my digital advertising courses for free mm -hmm. for the next 30 days. You want access to these? Take them free for 30 days. On one side, people, some of them said, oh, you're absolutely insane. Why would you do that? And he said, because people will remember it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm able to help and I will help when I'm able to right now. And so, it, you know, it, 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 and again, here's my tone. We're going to get through this. People are going to make yes. it through it. We're re, we are resilient as a race. Humans as a race are resilient. We're going to make it through it. So, that it, yeah, everything's going to look different. How we conduct business is going to do different, uh, be different. How we connect with people is going to be different. How we choose vendors is going to be different. And so the, you know, some of those relationships to, to Peter's point a minute ago, if, if you're not contacting those vendors and communicating with them and telling you, hey, here's what I need and where can you help and have that open line of communication, I think there's a lot to be said. Communicate, real communication is magical right now. You know, I love that. Real communication is magical right now. So I'm going to take Absolutely. that as your final words, Mike. What I like to do at the end of every show is just allow my guests the opportunity to speak a few final words to people who are watching the show live, as well as people who are watching in the archives. And I see Corinne over there ready to go. So what do you have for us, Corinne? I was just about to say work on partnership and to go back to what Mike said, just create that human opportunity and communicate with people like even for me right before this hit i was about to do this partnership with different pr firm in europe to grow my network to let them know that i'm available to help them in north america and this and this and even though this is happening right now i'm making sure that i communicate with them on a weekly basis to see how everyone is doing and people appreciate it people come back to me and they're like thank you so much to care. Not everyone does that. So it's really, again, being human, just stay true to yourself. I love it. Cal? Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Sharifa. Thanks for everyone who came on. It was an interesting conversation for sure. And um, just to anyone watching this on Facebook Live, if you want to check us out, our company, we're at illuminatelabs.io. Love it. Daniel? Yeah, my uh, single point of advice is take action and update your, your world, the, you know, the value props have to change right now. Um, and if you need help, we're here for you. Yes. I see at myoutdesk.com. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Peter. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just reading the back of the shirt and I love it. it. It's wonderful. I love the logo, the mod virtual scale with virtual professionals might yeah. have to check it out. The shirt, the logo, actually, you know, it's, we were talking about this before the show, we're, we're actually offering free designs for these things through a vendor. So creating those vendor, we're calling it vendor love, you know, where these different vendors that we've used and that we partner with and that we exchange clients. And the guy that created this is giving it away the design for free. So I think hashtag that's another, vendor love. Yeah. It's called vendor love. Seriously. So, <laughs> you know, it's not quite as cool as Vegas, but you know, it'll work. <laughs> You, you have some vendor love for us, Peter. Well, I think you have to accept that everything's different now. It's mm -hmm. not going to go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. So if you can accept the difference and you can, as you know, my friends from the Navy say, embrace the suck, uh, you will be much better off going forward. If you try to go back and put the Humpty Dumpty back together, it's not going to work. So you've got to accept that it's different and uh, uh, embrace the pain a little bit. 
I love it. It has been an excellent show. I definitely love what I do. I love the opportunity to sit down and speak with some of the greatest minds in the world. I've enjoyed myself. And if you have enjoyed yourself, if you're watching this live or watching this in the archives, please support our guests. Support the show and support our guests. Everyone's website address and information is in the description. Please check them out. Give them some vendor love. Get all of your trips to the Cordia kitchens in Vegas, have something cooked up, get your virtual professionals over there with Daniel, get those supplements to stay healthy. Corinne is going to help you with your PR plans. And then Mike, we don't we don't even know what to do with Mike, but I'm sure somehow some way <laughs> leadership, education and consulting. That's my that's my bread and butter. Okay, leadership, education, education consulting. And consult. Mm -hmm. with, with Mike. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, yes. Mike. So got, we, will, <laughs> we will be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please share the show. And if you're interested in being a guest, please visit the website at ashsharifa.com. Until tomorrow, everyone have a safe and blessed day. Bye now.